Hello, this is a pathology specimen which comprises three different organs. We have here the stomach with the gastric rugae. There is a slice of liver here and this is the uterus with bilateral adnexal structures. Let's take a look one by one and let's first have a look at the stomach. So this is the mucosal surface of the stomach and we can see that there is a large irregular ulcer with rolled edges. And if I turn this slightly at an angle, we can actually appreciate that the edges are rather thick and heaped up. We can also see in this region that the gastric wall is significantly thickened, and this is because it is infiltrated by malignancy. The diagnosis here is gastric adenocarcinoma. Let's have a quick look at the serosal surface. So this is the serosal surface of the stomach, and this is the area that has been sampled for histologic examination. Here is a slice of liver and we're looking at the cut surface of the liver parenchyma. So magnifying this, we can appreciate that there is a nodule here just abutting the liver capsule. This is slightly paler than the rest of the liver parenchyma. And if we move to this area, we can also appreciate that there is another relatively rounded nodule. It appears to be slightly paler than the rest of the liver parenchyma. What we're looking at here is metastatic adenocarcinoma from the stomach. And now moving down to the uterus. What we're looking at here is actually the posterior surface of the uterus. And this is the uterine serosa, which is relatively smooth posteriorly. This is the left ovary, which is enlarged. And this is the right ovary, which is also slightly enlarged. So we have a uterus with bilateral enlarged ovaries. And I want you to focus on the uterine serosa. As I turn this around, this is the anterior surface of the uterus. And we can see that the peritoneal reflection is actually higher up anteriorly compared to posteriorly. And this is because of the presence of the bladder anteriorly. So here is the right fallopian tube. And that is the enlarged right ovary. And this is the left fallopian tube with the enlarged left ovary. And what is happening here is also metastatic gastric carcinoma that is involving bilateral ovaries. Let's talk a little bit about metastases to the ovary. Uh, the commonest sources are usually within the female genital tract itself uh, in terms of the carcinomas or the malignant epithelial tumors, particularly in the uterus, for example, endometrial adenocarcinoma, the fallopian tube tumors, as well as tumors of the contralateral ovary. The pelvic peritoneum is also a source of metastases to the ovary. Outside of the female genital tract, uh, it is not uncommon to have um, gastrointestinal tract tumors such as colonic adenocarcinoma, appendicillal tumors, which may be mucinous in nature. These tumors may actually produce huge amounts of extracellular mucin and um, may result in pseudomyxoma peritonei as well as uh, metastases in the ovaries. The stomach, in addition, is also an important, um, not uncommon source of metastases to the ovary. And the stomach is often the culprit and the source of a Krukenberg tumor, which we'll talk about uh, shortly. The pancreas and the biliary tract are also sources of metastases to the ovary. So we mentioned Krukenberg tumor earlier, and this is defined as metastatic adenocarcinoma with signet ring cells. This is a microscopic picture showing the ovarian stroma. So all these cellular areas are the stromal cells of the ovary, but we can make out that there are quite large cells occurring here within the stroma, sort of just uh, infiltrating and percolating into the stroma. And these cells can be recognized as signet ring cells with very eccentric compressed nuclei and this kind of bubbly mucin-filled cytoplasm. The commonest sources are the gastrointestinal tract, in particular the stomach, when there is signet ring cell adenocarcinoma or poorly cohesive adenocarcinoma and other areas in the gut, and potentially other primary sources in the pancreatobiliary tract and the breast can also give rise to these tumors. So here is a higher magnification view 
of the signet ring cells where you can appreciate the morphology of the cells. This kind of pinkish, grayish, bubbly material is mucin. And this is a special stain that we do called DPES, which is per iodic acid shift with diastase digestion. And here we have this bright magenta appearing intracytoplasmic mucin. And this is classical for signet ring cell adenocarcinoma. Moving back to yet another case, grossly, this is another specimen showing bilateral ovaries. And uh, we can see from the centimeter scale here that the ovaries are rather large. For example, uh, if we were to measure this one, it would be approximately uh, 7 to 8 centimeters across. And this is definitely large. The ovaries also appear to be quite solid on the cut surface. And uh, we can see the same on the opposite side. So this is another example of bilateral metastases to the ovaries. And uh, they could come from any of the sources that we mentioned earlier on. If on microscopy they show signet ring cells, they would be called Krukenberg tumors. And we would really have to look very carefully in the stomach for a potential primary site. And finally, just to summarize, this was the specimen we saw initially. And we have a primary adenocarcinoma in the stomach. We can see a very irregular ulcer with heaped up edges. With liver metastases, in this instance, we can see two nodules of metastatic tumor in the liver. And there are bilateral enlarged ovaries. And this is an instance of gastric adenocarcinoma with both hepatic metastases as well as metastases to bilateral ovaries. Thank you.